Peace and blessings, family. This is your brother, Asar M. Hotep, with the Martin Delaney Center for Egyptology and Madhu and Della Press. Today is Sunday, January the 16th, 2022, and we are already starting a new year with that great Black African knowledge and power. And we have a very dynamic show today with two very special guests, dear and special guests uh, to me and to this channel. Uh, we have Drs. Uh, Salim Faraji and Jahi Issa. And today we're going to be talking about an, a very important conference uh, that is going to be happening uh, on February the 15th and the 16th. It's an online conference where we will be connecting uh, ancient e Egypt, Nubia, and uh, West Africa, the Niger uh, River civilizations and beyond. So all of that and more when we return in just a moment. Yes, yes, y'all, we are back. And uh, as I said, we have a very, very special show and a very special topic. And I want to thank each and every one of you for joining us live on this Sunday, uh, the 16th of January, 2022. And so, you know, as always, I like to start off with a few announcements. And so, uh, as usual, in February, um, from the 18th to the 28th, I will be involved in a very special tour and conference in Egypt, uh, headed by the uh, award-winning Hoppy documentary film um, producers and the Aket Tours. And so there's going to be a very special uh, conference on i believe it's the 25th and 26th and who's going to be there scheduled to be there at the conference is dr leonard jeffries professor smalls anthony browder dr solange ashby dr rosalind jeffries dr wade nobles and his wife dr vera nobles uh and fadishi jahuti mess as well as uh, Dr. Theophile Obinga, as well as your bro, uh, Asar Imhotep. And so, you know, it is the Returning to the Source Conference uh, in Aswan. Uh, we will be there uh, uh, in, you know, beginning of the so-called Nubian territory. And uh, it's just going to be a very dynamic conference. So, you know, I know it's kind of close, but if if those of you have those kinds of funds and would like to go, y'all should hit up aketours.com, which you can see at the bottom. But if you can't see that uh, all too great, again, here is the link, aketours.com. And so while I am there, I will be shooting some of the B footage for the documentary film. Um, that I'm producing titled China Into, uh, you know, Ancient Egypt in the Into Universe is the uh, full title. And so in alignment with the, the conversation that we're having today, and which will be the focus of the conference, um, I'm bringing that 
information and dynamic and putting it in film form. So as you know, we're in the first phase of fundraising, phase one, where we're trying to raise uh, $5,000 to uh, do some preliminary work. And some of that will be done in Egypt when I go in February. And so you can support in many ways. Uh, one, by joining the Patreon at patreon.com forward slash Asar Imhotep, as well as going to the website, chinaintofilm.com, where on the homepage you can see the donation area and how much has been raised thus far and you know who has uh, donated if they uh, decided not to donate anonymously um or you can do you know the cash app at the um address that you see below uh dollar sign asar m hotep so everything goes towards the film of course i will keep everyone updated and certain perks and things that come along with the the supporting of this particular project so it is going to be a, a a very dynamic film and the film will concentrate on the relationship the first film is intended to be a series of films uh between ancient egypt and uh bantu cultures and civilizations and then the second film is intended to move west uh in in dealing above cameroon into nigeria all the way to senegal so actually probably lake chad we should do lake chad all the way down uh, to West Africa. And what else, what else? Um, if you have not already, I highly encourage each and every one of you to Right, y'all can pick up the latest book from Dr. Chilimalema Mukinge, uh, titled Muntu Wine Zombie Portrait of Human as God's Special Creation at Amazon, or you can go to maduandelapress.com. This is uh, one of the latest texts from Madu and Della Publishing, my publishing company. And you know, there is more to come, so uh, stay tuned. And so, this is a very, very important and dynamic book. And we have several interviews on this channel with the author. And, you know, we intend to have some more uh, conversation centered around the themes of this book. And, uh, and I think that's about it for now. But as always, I love to give a shout out and thank everyone who has made themselves known in the chat. Uh, peace and blessings to sister Tamika who is in the building and I saw that you gave a super chat last week and I wasn't I didn't see it initially because of the presentation but I just wanted to say thank you uh, on air for your contribution um, and it is greatly appreciated so peace to boom in the building and thanks to uh, Octo Thorpe for the uh, super chat uh, we appreciate it very, very much here. And Omar Reed, Black African Power to you as well. Uh, peace and blessings to OG Gorilla. Uh, always a blessings to have New York in the house. And of course, we are international. So we got our brother Conan Lee all the way uh, in Europe, in the UK, uh, joining us. And then we also have Sister Jolanda Zachary all the way from Florida in the building my uh, birth state so always love to you uh sylvia stewart is in the building peace and blessings thank you for having 
uh, or, or joining us again. And Donnie Williams is in the building. So thank each and every one of you and all of you, of course, who are watching live via Facebook on the Asarm Hotep page, as well as the Harold Johnson uh, page. So thank you and, and peace and blessings to Anthony Richards. H-Town in the building always, you know, uh, I always got to rep the tray, you know, when I have an opportunity. And so without further ado, I am going to introduce our very important special guest. And as I mentioned before, uh, we are here to talk about this very important uh, conference that is coming up in February. and the the two individuals that we have today are the organizers you know of this conference so i just want to uh introduce them and so we're going to start off with dr jahi isa uh, who was born and reared in st louis county ferguson missouri he completed his undergraduate degree in history at texas southern university uh, also h-town in the building after a short stint of at Emory University Candler School of Theology, he earned both his MA and PhD from HBCU's Southern University and Howard University, respectively. He is an editor with the Journal of Pan-African Studies and a leading scholar on the African diaspora and history of Marcus Garvey and the UNIA uh, movement in Louisiana and in the American South. While working as the scholar in residence at the W.B. Du Bois Center for Pan-African Culture in Accra, Ghana, during the summer of 1998, he met Professor Ose and initiated a dialogue on how to make the book The Origin of the Word Amen, which I believe is currently in its second edition, uh, accessible in the United States and the international community. Dr. Issa has been traveling throughout Ghana, excuse me, throughout Africa, for over 25 years in various countries such as Egypt, Ghana, Ethiopia, Sierra Leone, Gambia, and Senegal, among others. He is a preeminent Africanist activist among his peers and is currently an adjunct faculty member at Megar Evers College of the City, uh, University of New York, Brooklyn, New York. So uh, we welcome Dr. Uh, Jahi Issa. And next we have Dr. Salim Faraji, uh, who is a professor and former chair of Africana Studies at California State University, Dominguez Hills. He is also the founding executive director of the Masters of Arts in International Studies Africa program at Concordia University, Irvine in Ghana, West Africa. He completed his Master of Divinity at the Claremont School of Theology and MA and PhD at Claremont Graduate University. He is a member of the International Society for Nubian Studies and specializes in early Christian history, Africana and Africanist historiography, Coptic studies, and the Sudanic, Napatan, Marotic, and medieval periods of Nubian history. Dr. Faraji is a contributor to Albert Cleach Jr. and the Black Madonna and Child, the Encyclopedia of African Religion, the Oxford Dictionary of African Biography, and the author of The Roots of Nubian Christianity Uncovered, The Triumph of the Last Pharaoh. Dr. Faraji has traveled extensively on the African continent in such nations as Ghana, Burkina Faso, Egypt, Ethiopia, and Namibia. He is currently an ordained minister in the African Methodist Episcopal Church and an African traditional healer who has been initiated in both the Akan traditions of Ghana, West Africa, and ancient Egyptian religious practices. So as you can see, we are dealing with some heavyweights. And so I welcome to the Mbongi, Dr. Jahi Issa, and Dr. Salim Faraji. How are y'all doing? Yes, greetings, greetings. <laughs> Peace of blessings. Greetings, my brother. Brother Osir. <laughs> uh, indeed, indeed. For, for having us on uh, today. And uh, we, we appreciate the invitation and the opportunity. Uh, thank you. Thank you for coming on. And, and it's, it's always a pleasure to uh, talk with both of you, uh, either individually or together. And so uh, we have a wealth of knowledge on this uh, panel here, uh, a lifetime worth of experiences. 
And I, I hope the listening and viewing audience uh, discovers more of your works that, you know, probably we can get a little bit into, but even, you know, I invite you all to come back so that we can get more in depth on, on the, the individual projects that uh, both of y'all are doing. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, we are here. There is a, a website called westafricabeyond.org. And when you go to the website, um, you will find information about the conference, which uh, is titled West Africa and Beyond, Ancient Nubian and Egyptian Interconnections with the Niger Valley and the Atlantic World. And um, before I get into that, I want, you know, and any one of you can uh, jump in and articulate you know, the beginnings and the origins of the uh, University of Amun and, and LLC. And what is that about? Um, and and then how, and then lead into, you know, how y'all came to uh, put this conference together and, and what does it all involve? Dr. Issa, you want to begin? Yeah, well, well, yeah, well I, I'll, I'll briefly just say, me, me, myself, and Dr. Faraji um, have we have been on this path together for what a quarter of a, a century now, right? Over Dr. over twenty five years. Over twenty five years. Over twenty five years. So twenty seven. Twenty seven, I believe. Yeah, twenty seven years we've been working mm -hmm. together, and so we're talking about um, this concept of what we're doing now. These are discussions that we've had <laughs> over 25 years ago from, from us meeting together in, in Southern California to us um, going to Kemet together, then going to Ghana a few times together and our, and our hours and hours and hours and hours of just discussions on how to promote, to promote African global history to the world. What would be our contribution? What would be our legacy? considering the fact that we come after such great men and women. And so um, that is really the origins of um, the University of Our Men. You know, this is, this is over a quarter of a century uh, uh, of work. And, and I thank God for Brother um, Faraji because he's always telling me we want to do things right. And we want to be professional at all mm -hmm. times. And so... Um, here we are with this conference, with the University of Amen, with a book called The Origin of the Word Amen. Um, I would say the conference itself, I, I would say the origins, the epistemology of this is probably a meeting that I had at the Du Bois Center with this unknown scholar at the time. He was very local, Okwami Osei. Mm -hmm. And that's when he, I was the scholar in residence at the Du Bois Center in Accra, and he gave me this pamphlet called Amen. I decided to, to bring it to the U.S. and I introduced it to Dr. Faraji, and we started discussing it over uh, meetings and conversations on the phone. And I, I will say that is the beginning of the University of Our Men. Mm -hmm. um, if Dr. Faraji wants to go further, he can well, you know, let, let, let me just echo um, my, my brother, my colleague, like we said, 27 years, you know, um, since we've been in our late 20s, now we're in our early 50s, right? I shouldn't be disclosing that, but you know, <laughs> it's all good. We've been on this thing, um, you know, for, for, for a minute. Um, and, and, and like Dr. Issa said, going to Kemet together, um, um, going to uh, Ghana together initially was uh, uh, Dr. Issa who actually introduced me uh, <clears throat> to, uh, to, to both of, of those countries. And so mm -hmm. our conversations, um, you know, our dialogue, our research, um, our writing and the synergy because Dr. Issa 
expertise, you know, although we we, we all know a, a little about a lot, right? <laughs> <laughs> I, I heard somebody say, you know, you PhDs, y'all know a whole lot about a little bit, <laughs> 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 right? And so we we know, you know, but his expertise is 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 uh, Africa and, and the African diaspora, the U.S. diaspora, and then of course mine is. Um, you know, antiquity, whether it's early Christian history, um, Nubia, Kemet, um, um, and, 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 and so forth. And so we feed off one another, right, that, that, yeah. that, that synergy. Um, and so the, the University of Amen, um, from, from, from my perspective, you know, when, when I started studying this in grad school, of course, well before grad school, on the streets of New York, on the streets of Philly, where, I, where I'm originally from, right, I, I, I've, I've said that history um, in, in other interviews, right? The, the, the grassroots um, um, knowledge, um, the indigenous um, African uh, knowledge that's created in the communities on the streets and now it's online, right? Now it's on YouTube, mm -hmm. now it's on Instagram, now it's on Facebook, right? But before it was in community centers, it was in the streets, it was on the subways and so forth. So certainly I come out of that tradition and, and I decided to go to grad school. So when I got to grad school, I started, started studying ancient Nubia. And, and I began to realize, I mean, specifically, not just what I knew, right? Even from the hip hop group, Brand Nubians, right? <laughs> uh, uh, um, Les Nubians, right? The, yeah. the Neo Soul group, right? And then even back in the day, the Nubian Ansars, right? Um, um, who, who, who held down um, communities in New York and Jersey and Philly and so forth. But, but I mean, when I began to engage the archeology, span the history, the anthropology, to some degree, the language and the scholarship of, of ancient Nubia, I began to realize the significance of ancient Kush, right? Um, mm. In the Nile Valley, something that Diop had echoed uh, uh, long ago. And also the prominence of the Amen tradition. And the, when I say Amen, I mean the infinite one, the hidden one, the eternal one, what our ancestors called that, that unseen uh, uh, presence, right? That, that, is, that is in the atmosphere, that comes in rain and clouds and so forth. And some of the Amun hymns scattered throughout the Nile Valley. Uh, so I began to realize the significance of the Amun tradition, not only in the Nile Valley, but also throughout the entire African continent. And certainly, all Sarah, you have, you know, I, I have, you know, several of your books. And, and so I know from a linguistic perspective, you have you have uh, laid out that that those connections as well. And mm -hmm. so it, the University of Amun is named after um, the Amun, mm -hmm. Amun, Aman, right? Mm -hmm. Um, the hidden one, the one that Shekhen to Diop, right, his, his, for me, famous quote in African origin civilization myth of reality, where he says, Amun is the god of all Black Africa, right? He says yeah. that. Um, and so the, the inspiration for the University of Amun is, uh, is that tradition, um, the Amun tradition. Uh, and, and, and then not only that, what Dr. Issa referred to, um, Professor uh, 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 Okwami Ose in Ghana wrote a book in the early 90s, The Origin of the Word Amen. It was a pamphlet being circulated only in Ghana. The uh, uh, Dr. Issa came upon it right in, in, in the late 90s at the Du Bois Center, right? Um, and, and, and then introduced me to it. You know, I remember he had boxes. I went to go see him when he was living in North Carolina. He had boxes <laughs> of the pamphlet okay. in his basement. And we were like, look, you know, we want to we want to publish this pamphlet. We're going to expand it, write write some commentary on it, and introduce it right to the uh, the U.S. diaspora. So the University of Amen also comes out of uh, that work, the origin of the word Amen, um, and, and and like I said, our, our scholarship and our spiritual practice rooted right in the Amun tradition in particular. Uh, in, in, in the Nile Valley, and, and, and I won't you know, get into detail, but you know, um, a, a martial art tradition has been inspired by that, right? My, my martial yeah. arts teacher, um, and so forth. Um, going in and uh, uh, studying and reconstructing the martial and combat practices in the Nile Valley, um, and certainly in Kush, because Kush was known for its stick fighting, Kush was known for its boxing. Kush was known for its its wrestling. Kush was also known for uh, its, its equestrianism, right? Um, 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 Calvary, 
right, on, on horses and so forth, right? That whole savanna culture, that Sahelian culture and so forth, right, that, that we see spread across um, um, the, the savanna zone, the Sahelian zone and so forth. And so Kush, Kush was, was known for that. And so, of course, we're not minimizing. Kemet, Kemet comes out of uh, uh, Kush, with, 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 without a doubt, and, and, and the savanna, savanna, Sahelian, Saharan cultures that preceded them. Um, we, 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 we know that. But we're we're just emphasizing, putting emphasis on uh, that tradition, because um, it has received uh, less attention um, and not the priority that it should take. So the University of Amen comes out of that. So we we are the University of Amen LLC. <laughs> we are an educational services company, right? Mm-hmm. Um, an educational services company, and we we want to provide uh, relevant. Uh, 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 education with excellence to Africa and the African diaspora, right? Especially as it pertains to our history, right? African world history, uh, ancient African civilizations, medieval African civilizations. Uh, you know, Malcolm's head of all our studies, history is best qualified to reward our research. Um, and so this is what we want to do. And then, of course, you know, we're, we're, we're from the U.S., right? We're U.S. based and born and raised here. But we also have a heart for the African continent, so we we really we really see our work also connecting um, with the African continent, the, the primary schools, secondary schools, tertiary institutions on the African continent, right? Um, mm-hmm. uh, pushing pushing this this school of thought, pushing this knowledge, and, and, and so forth. And so the conference emerged out of that. Again, Dr. Jahi said, you know. He said, I'm always emphasizing we got to be professional, right? Yeah. <laughs> right. Let, let's be professional. Let, let's, let's, uh, you know, let, let's do things right. But this brother, this brother is the instigator. He's the, he's the activator. He's the initiator, right? Um, for what we do. And so, again, the, the this, this conference, you know, Dr. Issa is in, he's in Gambia now. He's in the Senegambia region, Senegal, Gambia. He's been meeting with scholars. And the history and Egyptology faculties at uh, 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 Sheikh Al University, um, mm-hmm. having conversations with them. Um, and then I, I came on. He brought me on board with those conversations, and we said, "Wow, let's do West Africa and beyond, right?" And 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 you know this, brother Osair. You you know many, not all, but some folk think. And and I see your post too, You're pushing us yeah. to Diop and run with Diop, not just. Mm-hmm. Stand on the op, right? You know, they 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 hand the football off to you. You don't stand with the football, you take it and you run through the hole with it, right? Exactly. So, um, and so now, we, I was just going to uh, we have scholars in Senegal, Cameroon, right? Who've taken Diop scholarship and run with it. So, we want to introduce that that body before, of knowledge. Stuff. Before we get to because I, I was just going to ask you this question. And uh, and I'll and I'll I'll let uh, Dr. Issa go first. If we're going to come back to y'all, because I want both of y'all to answer this. Now, you know, I catch all kind of uh, holy hell uh, in in my back in the day church voice um, for suggesting because you know the theme of the conference is the interconnections between the Nile River Valley and the the Niger, you know, uh, river uh, civilizations, et cetera, in West Africa. And so you have people who just are vehemently. Now, I can understand, given the history of the United States and Europe and racism, and they just don't want to um, give Africa its props for nothing. But now there's this kind of wave of black folks who want to without reading any of the literature, argue against these particular types of uh, interconnections. And so I want to want to get your opinion on based upon your your own independent research, you know, is is there valid claims to connections and what do we mean by connections between the now uh, the ancient now river valley, uh, civilizations, uh, ancient Egypt, uh, Kush, Nubia, and and West Africa. 
Yeah, well, not not only, you know, and, and that's why we're having this very important dialogue in February with some of the top intellectuals in the, in, in the world on the subject. Um, and, and, you know, I went to Senegal more than a year and a half ago, and I was at the University of Sheikh Ntijiak, my first time there. And um, when you walk on the campus, you see these big murals of the late great ancestor, Dr. Jok. Jok. And um, I went to the department of the faculties of social science and met with the director of the Egyptology and Nubiology Center there. And it was from that conversation myself and a student who is um, finishing, who will be defending his master's thesis um, from the University of Sheikh Antijia. His name is Abdullah Ba. His name is Abdullah Ba, B A. Mm -hmm. His name is Abdullah Ba. <laughs> right? Now, 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 you know, for those of us who have some basic understandings about uh, Numeru Neta and, and Kemet and Taseri and that entire Nile Valley region, we know what the word Ba means. And this brother is a Fula. He's from the Fula people. And right, and so while I was at the university um, dialoguing with the professors at Second Tijok um, University, I had a chance to look at numerous of their master's thesis and PhD dissertations. And all of their dissertations and master's thesis are on various ethnic groups within the Senegambia region mm -hmm. that shows their relationship with Kemet with mm. Nubia. Mm. So not only, you know, this is stuff that I saw with my own eyes and I was blown away. And I said, look, we got to have this conference mm -hmm. because I'm hearing some of our brothers and sisters who really don't know that there not only is there a connection, that they, they themselves are a part of that connection via the transatlantic slave trade. So we have a brother by the name of Abdullah. Abdullah, of course, is Arabic influence, but Ba, Ba <laughs> is an indigenous African name. And we also know that Ba means what in Kemet, in Nubia. It means the spirit, the soul. Mm -hmm. Right? And then when you walk on the campus of Sheikh Antijia, you will see this large circle about 200 feet wide with the basic syllables of the Meduneta. And guess which syllable was one of the first ones? Ba. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? So at the University of Sheikh Antijiop, I would like to argue, I like to say that they have one of the best nubiology, nubi, nubiologists, nubiologists and Egyptologist departments in the world. They have several faculty who specialize in nothing more than the connections between Nubia, Kemet, and West Africa. I think they have like four or five, three or four full-time and two or three part-time. Hmm. And so I met with Professor Lamb, um, who was a personal assistant to Dr. Sheikh Ntijok, that's Dr. Uh, Abu Bukri Musalam. Uh, Musalam, yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, we we talk. We we talk. I have some footage on him. We talk. We talk more than um two hours in this office, and I, I was able to film some of it. And, and and he was just talking about his relationship with the re late great ancestor, and, and and the relationship that we blacks, particularly those who migrated from the Sudan basin into what is now known as West Africa. And then some of us got caught into the slave trade and ended up in Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, Jamaica, Suriname, Colombia, Panama, and Mexico, right? But we all come out of that ancient Sahel, Sudanic tradition of divine kingship 
that predates even Kemet. And this is something that Dr. Farage will continue. I apologize. Please. I had to mute you because there was an echo, so I didn't know where it was coming from. Go ahead. No, yeah, yeah, no, no problem, no problem. <laughs> You know, I, I see that you you just you just showed uh, Doctor Do, Doctor Lamb's book, uh, one of his books, I should say. And so, I, I mean, you know, I, I just sent Doctor Issa something um, last night. You know, th th there's this idea that somehow um, Diop's work has been uh, stagnant or sus what, what, what did I say? suspended on the periphery of Western Egyptology and Nubiology since, since his death in 1986 or his works, right? And certainly Dr. Issa shows that that's not the case. There have been hundreds of dissertations and theses put out, right, at University of Shekhen Diop, also the University of Yaoundé in Cameroon. Two of our colleagues are coming from there, right, and who have been on the forefront of uh, this scholarship and, and, and our Cameroonian colleagues are connecting the Bantu, right? Which I know you're also interested in and have done work uh, also there, connecting the Bantu uh, uh, traditions uh, with, with the Nile Valley, both both Kush and Kemet, Nubia uh, uh, and Egypt and so forth, right? There, there's a body, you know, it, it, even beyond the Nile Valley, one of the things that, that has just amazed me is just uh, Africanist archeology, span right? You know, um, my, my work, I'm a historian who relies a great deal on anthropological sources and archeological sources. And then, as I always say, I have a modest, uh, 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 modest competency in languages, right? I've studied Medunetter, but I'm not a philologist. I've studied Coptic. I wouldn't say I'm a, a, a philologist, uh, a Greek. And, 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 you know, my, as, as my wife would say, my little ABC, one, two, three, tree. <laughs> Right, so I'm I'm no uh, 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 expert, but I have I have the grammars, the dictionaries, and I know how to get around when I when when when, when I need to. But my only point is is that Africanist archaeology, right? Many of us are not even engaging in reading that whatsoever. Mm. And so one of the one of the young brothers, uh, Doctor, uh, oh, he's a PhD candidate. He's a PhD candidate, University of Shekinta Diop, right? Uh, uh, his name is uh, Lamin Baji. Lamin Baji. He's a PhD candidate, right? Under uh, Ibrahima Jiao, Dr. Ibrahim Jiao, right? If you Google him, he's, oh, one, of the, he's one of the most prominent Africanist archaeologists on the continent, right? He's out of he's out of Senegal, right? And so there's a whole body, not only in Nile Valley studies. Right. Thank you, uh, Osir. Not yeah. only in Nile Valley studies, but there's a there's an entire body of scholarship on the archaeology of West Africa. I just wrote um, a paper that's under review now, where um, I'm looking at earthen pyramids, um, sometimes called tumuli, sometimes called mounds scattered throughout the Nile Valley in, in Upper Egypt, Upper Kemet, Kush, uh, but also Northern Nigeria, uh, uh, Niger, Chad, Northern Ghana, um, Mali, Senegal, and Gambia, right? And, and some of this, uh, some of this, this work um, has been around for a hundred years. The French, when they colonized uh, what is now West Africa, right? Called it French West Africa, Upper Volta, other regions. Um, they had excavated these earthen pyramids. Hmm. Um, the, Dr. Ibrahim and Zhao at the University of Shekinta Diop has surveyed the earthen pyramids or the tumuli, the mounds. These are royal, royal cemeteries, or should I say royal tombs that held monarchs. Right, he's been excavating this for maybe twenty years or more. Mm. Right, and then his students there at the University of Diop. So not only are they leaders um, in Egyptology and Nubiology, but they are also leaders in Africanist archaeology. And so, for me, 
what, what a methodology is, is to put all of that together, of course, along with the linguistics, right? To put all of that together, to look at the Egyptological research, the research in nubiology, the Africanist archeology, span right? Um, then I was telling Jahi, there's a scholar, uh, may he rest in peace, uh, 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 Dr. J, he just, he just passed recently, I think maybe 2020, 2019, uh, uh, Dr. James Akwanda, right? Mm. Uh, University of Ghana, archaeology department, has been excavating the, the, the tumuli, the royal mounds in northern Ghana for 30 years. Mm. We're not even, <laughs> we're not even engaging, you know, that, that, that body of uh, uh, scholarship. And so um, we want to, through this conference, introduce, right, at least some of that work um, to uh, the audience, US, di US diaspora, Anglo Anglophone speaking audience, right? And so we'd be aware. That it it's no debate about the interconnections, mm. right? Uh, European scholars, you know, I, I was joking with Dr. Issa, one of our colleagues. I said, look, we, we, some of us be thinking we deep. <laughs> we're on the cutting edge. We're not deep and we're not on the cutting edge. We just, we just, uh, 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 what is it? Fortunate, right, to be enmeshed in this knowledge now, right? And, and I'm saying this because I'm looking at a 200 year old source, 1817, mm. uh, <laughs> British colonial officer in Ghana mm. wrote a book on, and I'm paraphrasing, um, Ashley, to you, Dr. Issa, uh, the Ashanti. The Abyssinians, Ethiopians, the Ashanti, the Abyssinians, and the Egyptians, <laughs> right? The connection between their cultures. I'm paraphrasing, right? Yeah. 18, 1821, 1817, right? And so I joke. I said, look, they they figured it out. They excavated it and said, okay, that's enough of that. Now let's get to ruling the world. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. Right? Let's get, right? Okay. Yeah, that's okay. Whatever. That, that, we, we've done that. Let, let's get to ruling the world now, right? Um, and so my, my my point is is that the interconnections um, are, in my opinion, in my assessment, obvious, right? I know your specialization also is linguistics. Mine is anthropology, archaeology, and another thing is the being initiated as as um, being initiated as an Okomfo, um the, uh, the Akan priesthood, right, in Ghana, which rivers, rivers of, of the utmost importance, right, in Akan spirituality and African spirituality in general. So I, you know, I have this, this you know, this fascination with the river. So I, you know, I follow the rivers, right? Mm -hmm. And so when you start looking at the connections between the Nile, the Middle Nile Basin and Lake Chad, the Lake Chad Basin and the Benoit Niger Basin, the Benoit Niger Basin and the Senegal River and so forth, the Congo Basin and its connection to the Nile Valley Basin. Just a couple of weeks ago, this is completely different, just a couple, no, be about a month ago, the Egyptian government, right, because of that, I don't want to get into this another conversation, but the Egyptian government, because of their uh, uh, stalemate with Ethiopia around that Renaissance Dam, right, that Ethiopia wants to build, the Egyptian government said, we're going to have to look for an alternative source. To bring the Nile River into Egypt, we're gonna we're gonna go try to connect with Congo. That was the day, not 2000 BCE, not 2500 BCE, not 3000 BCE. That was today. The Egyptian <laughs> government said we need to connect with the Congolese to bring the Nile from the Congo, the White Nile, mm -hmm. right? And, and, and circumvent Ethiopia and bring the Nile into Egypt that way, right? And yeah. that was the day, right? So we see the, the connections of the Congo Basin to the Nile, right? And then the, the Niger Benwa, right? The Benwa, the tributary of the, of the Nile that connects to the Lake Chad Basin, right? Um, the tributary, the Yellow Nile, Right, I've recently written on the yellow. The yellow Nile was a tributary of the of the of the so-called White Nile. Today, it's called the Wadi Hawar because it's a dry riverbed. It 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 it, it dried up around the Napatan period, around 1000 BCE, after flowing for three or four thousand years. Right, 
uh, European archaeologists have, have, ex have been excavating in the Yellow Nile region, have found over 1,700, 1700 settlements. They say it's one of the birthplaces for uh, what would become Meroitic language as well as the Nubian language. And it was one of the crossroads between uh, West, uh, Central and West Africa and the Nile Valley, right? The yellow, the yellow Nile flowing west from, actually it rises in Chad, connected with the Lake Chad Basin, and then it flows east and empties into the Nile River, right? Indeed. And so we follow the river systems the river systems, the Sahel, what I call the Sahelian wetlands, right? Then you see the connection. It's look, it's just like if you get on a map and you look at and you look at you look at the Nile River from uh, 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 Congo, from Rwanda, Burundi, right? The Great Lakes region, and it flows uh, northward, right? That same connection is across the Sahel, the Sahelian yeah. wetlands. It's the same connection. At, uh, uh, the ceramic traditions shows it, the architectural traditions shows it. Uh, uh, Kari shells, I just posted that a couple of days ago. Kari mm -hmm. shells show it. Uh, uh, um, even watermelons, <laughs> my goodness, right? The, the, the watermelon domesticated in, in the middle Nile Valley is the same species of watermelon that will emerge in West Africa that they use for a goosey stew in Ghana and Nigeria and so forth, right? We, exactly. we can go on and on with the material culture connections, let alone the stuff that you focus on, Mosair, the, the linguistic. Indeed. And uh, I just want to answer a question um, from the chat. So the the author that was mentioned uh, is Dr. Abu Bukri Musalam. So that's that's how you spell his name. And uh, the one text that I'm holding is the... Uh, it's translated as the path of the road of the Nile, um, but all his works are in French. So if you read French, you'll you'll be able to uh, understand the word. But even if you don't read French, get the book anyway, and then learn French. Uh, you know that's that's what I do with certain German books. Is that I just get it, and then you know Google Translate some some um, some passages while I work on trying to learn German, you know. Uh, but that's 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 who uh, we mentioned earlier. So that's his name, uh, Brother Conan. So um, speaking of these these ancient tributaries that that in, uh, made it easier in ancient times to to flow and travel, you know, um, you know, up the, the, or down up the Nile and into the Sahara, you know, we have a, a special guest that will be kind of speaking on that at the conference. Uh, matter of fact, I just had a three hour conversation with him last night and I'm speaking of Dr. Shramaka Keita. And so, but what I want to do is go through the the page so i have the page up so you can go to westafricabeyond.org and get more information about the conference itself and so right now i'm on the presenters page and i want you all to just to say and we can skip me um and and just say a little something about the some of the the, the presenters as i go down and name them so uh, I'll start off with Dr. Abdul Salau, or Salau. Yeah, Brother Abdul is a linguist who studied under Dr. Um, Theofalo Banga. He teaches at Tuskegee University. He's a Yoruba, he's a Yoruba um, out of Nigeria. And he studies the Nile Valley connection linguistically to the Yoruba people of Nigeria. Remember, uh, you know, and and I, I think this is also the time, Dr. Faraday, we should bring up our our article that that we're going to publish on academia.com, where it's a response to um, Brother Dr. Cambone, Obadelli Cambone. He did a review of our book, The Origin of the Word Amen. I think he did a um, premature review of the book, with not without understanding some very important historical and material culture facts. But 
as Dr. Farage has said, and as we had coined in our in our response to Dr. Cambon, is that the best way to understand the Akan people, not only the Akan, but the Yoruba, um, um, and for that part, some of our uh, ethnic groups that are in uh, on the Senegambia region, is to understand the Sahel, because they and to understand Nubia or, or Meroitic Mer Kush, they are cousins, as, as, as siblings, as, as we coined in our article, they're actually siblings of Meroitic Kush. They grew up together, the Yoruba, the Akans, the Wolo. They grew up together with Meroitic Kush. And a lot of us try to make the comparison between Egypt, although it's there, but it's really more about a, a, a culture and a civilization that's much older than Egypt, in which Egypt got its, its start from, and that is Meroiticus and Nubia and, and, and the southern part of the Nile that is not mentioned a lot. And so, yeah, that's Brother Abdullah. He's going to come in, Abdul. He's going to come in and talk about the Yoruba. All righty. And um, did you want to add anything, Dr. Uh, Faraji? Oh, you know, uh, no, that's it. You know, Dr. Okay. Um, Dr. Salua, you know, we've been colleagues um, with him for a very long time. Like I, like, like uh, Dr. Issa said, he's a student of uh, Dr. Obanga. And I remember countless conversations with him uh, at Check and the Diop conferences in Philly um, over the years. So, yeah. you know, his, he got his PhD his, at uh, Temple. He got his PhD well, at Temple, right? Yeah. Uh, uh, when, when Obanga was at Temple back in um, the mid '90s, right before yeah. he had to, um, before he left. Of course, Dr. Shamok, uh, Dr. Shamarka uh, Kita. You know, what can I say about Dr. <laughs> Dr. Kita? Dr. Kita first is a physician, but he's also yeah. a medical uh, anthropologist who does physical anthropology, uh, genetics. So he's going to be bringing. Um, that perspective, right? I, we, we all been students of uh, Dr. Kita for a very long time, and now we're, now we're honored to be his his junior colleagues. Um, you know, we've been on. He and I were on a uh, panel together um, at a conference at UC Santa Barbara, probably a couple of years ago, dealing with ancient Kush and so forth. So, um, but uh, Dr. Kita um, has worked with the worked with the Smithsonian. Um, he's a brilliant scholar um, and brilliant in what he does. So we're, we're happy and pleased um, to have him as a part of this conference. Indeed. And, yeah, um, and Dr. 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 Kita, you know, uh, and I want to point this out to the listening audience. One, you guys go to West Africa and beyond, West Africa beyond, and register today. It's $35. Myself and Dr. Farage have put a tremendous amount of monetary resource and, and time in bringing this conference to the public. This is mm -hmm. our conference. This is our conference. This has been a part of our struggle since mm -hmm. the days of Delaney. We've been talking about this. And so we want you to go now, sign up, share our link with your friends and family. And yes, and tell them, yes, it is true. We are descendants of kings and queens of Africa, of West and Central Africa, and that, that have lineage to go back to ancient Nubia and Kemet. This conference will bring that out for the first time. This has been within our personal and basic discussion in Black America for a long time. And now we have put together some of the best thinkers in the world from Nigeria, from, from, as he said, from the U.S., from Senegal, from Cameroon, right, all over the black world to come in and give this information. And it's just a modest $35 per day, $70 to sign up. I'm even asking that you go ahead and, 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 and sign up other people. Give them a gift <laughs> so that our people can come in and hear these very important discussions. Okay, um, Dr. Dr. Kita, you know, that's 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 one of my godfathers. I met him when I was doing my PhD at Howard University, and he was always encouraging this brother. This brother 
is the one who founded um, African ancestry with Dr. Keith, with Dr. Kittles. This is how far and how bad this brother is. This brother has a doctoral degree from Oxford University in mm. biological anthropology. How many of us have done that and have been able to come back and give time and energy back to the community? Not only, as you said, Brother Asar, that he's also a medical doctor. <laughs> right? And so the, the, there's no argument on who we have. We have the best of the best that will be coming out in February. Nobody can refute what we're saying. This is hands down. Now we are saying for the first time as a group, following the work of Sheikh Antijia, following the work of Yosef Ben Yakin, following the work of John Henry Clark, following the work of, uh, uh, of Dr. Martin Delaney, mm -hmm. following the work of so many people who have come before us. Now we are saying, here, here's the proof to our people, to the youth, to the youth who are studying Meruneta without going to college, coming out of prison, studying this ancient, ancient, ancient writing, writing and, and, and spiritual system. We're saying now we're going to give you more resources to return our history back to where it should have been a long time ago. But we have to do that, and we are doing that. So please go and sign up now. Ask other people to sign up. Our goal is to get 400 people each day for this conference. Indeed. And, and he brings up a very important point, because I get asked all the time. Um, and even, I think, uh, Dr. Faraji has asked this at one point of me, is like, how do you be knowing about certain scholars? Like, where did you find this, this, this scholar and this information? And I'm like, it's because of attending conferences such as this and getting familiar with uh, these, these prolific researchers who write certain texts. And then I'll write, I'll purchase their texts and then go through their bibliography. And then I buy some more text. And that's how I get you know uh certain information about it it's it's because of these these networking opportunities at these particular conferences um you know throughout the years so um so this is why i wanted to kind of go through this list to to show like this these aren't some regular folks that that are that are attending here like these, these are some heavyweights. Many of them I've cited in my own works, and and so you know, if you can say something about uh, Doctor, how you say it, Muhammadu, Muhammadu, uh, Muhammadu. Okay, uh, Nisiri Sar. Go ahead. Well, I, I'm I'm certainly um, I'm I'm going to let you know Doctor Issa speak on. Dr. Muhammadu uh, Nasir Sar. Yeah, I'll he's, be really brief. He, he's in the um, history department at uh, University of Kentucky. Um, I have one of his journals, mm -hmm. um, and then I. But I'm going to defer to Dr. Issa right now, and, and I'm just going to talk about a conversation because he and I have been, he and I have been talking um, via WhatsApp, and so I've had to pull out my elementary French skills as well as Google French translation right, for, <laughs> for he and I to talk. But it's been rich, the conversations that I've had with this man, right, uh -huh. um, are, are, are powerful and beautiful. And we're, we're on the same page in many respects um, and, and, and have only met within the past, you know, a couple months or so. So, but, 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 but Dr. Issa has met him and been to his office, talked to him person. So I'm gonna let him speak about uh, Dr. Nasir Sar. Yeah, he, well, the, like I said, the University of Sheikh Antijok, um, they don't have an Egyptology department. It's all under the, the faculty of social science. I believe that's the name of the department. And within that department, they have different branches. And Dr. Um, uh, uh, um, Nasir, uh, if I'm correct, is over that of now valley civilization in which they not only do they um teach but the, as i said 
they also administer master's thesis and doctoral dissertations on the connection between black Africa and now Valley civilizations. And so, yes, I met him on my first trip to the University of Sekantajia. And so if we have students who have at least a master's degree, a bachelor's degree, and they may be interested in, in going to the best, I would say that I don't think there's a place like it in the world, that university, the best mm -hmm. university. If you want to study the connection between um, um, West Africa, your ancestors, Central Africa, West Africa, and now Valley Civilization, the best place in the world is to go is in Dakar, Senegal. Mm -hmm. and, and this man is uh, uh, over that branch within the department. The department chair is Dr. Ba, right? Mm -hmm. And so um, we're, we're, we're still trying to work out some things with the department, the, the, the faculties of social science to bring them on, but we're still in negotiation. But nonetheless, we do, as, as Dr. Farage has stated, we do have several faculty and doctoral students from that university who will be presenting. But I'm just excited about this because this has been a labor of love to bring our history and our culture to the forefront of our struggle. This, this, the, 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 there's nothing better than to do to, to bring this to the average brother and sister. And so you, this is why I'm so excited. You, you know, I, I've been to, like, like many of us, I've been to a lot of conferences mm -hmm. that focus on African diaspora and not only history conferences, conferences that are dealing with um, the contemporary geopolitics of Africa, right? Development in Africa, right? Um, 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 where I teach, Cal State Dominguez Hills, we led something called the Pan-African Trade and Global Development Conference, right? And I've had conversations um, with brothers and sisters from the Francophone African diaspora. And one of the things that they have said, right? And of course, this is anecdotal. It's anecdotal, right? I, I know it's not representative of, you know, everybody everywhere, but many of my brothers and sisters from Cote d'Ivoire, the Ivory Coast, from Togo, uh, uh, from Benin, uh, from Cameroon, Senegal, they say, the African Americans, y'all do well connecting with English speaking Africa, but we really want to see more connection with Francophone. And of course, there's a language barrier, right? That, that's why. I mean, we're not, you're not reading French books unless you study French, right? Or you really did well in high school when you're in French, high school French, right, classes and so forth. So we, and so we recognize that. And so what we wanted to do is say, look, this is cutting edge scholarship, like Dr. Issa said, that no one else is doing in the African diaspora in the black world. Let's bring it to the people. Indeed. Let's bring Dr. Muhammadu Nasir Sar, right, uh, to the people. Let's bring students from Shekhan to Diop University, right, to the people, right? Um, so you all can be exposed firsthand to their scholarship in their uh, and their research. Dr. Nassar, Dr. Nasir Sar, you know, we had conversations. He's going to be presenting on the connections between ancient Kerma Kush, right, and the Senegambian people, right? Something that's dear to my heart. And what is he going to be talking about? The tumuli, the earthen pyramids, the royal mound structures that are all throughout the Senegambian region and how they follow the prototype of the royal tumuli and Kerma Kush, right? This is something that I also uh, uh, write about. But to meet a scholar, right, uh, uh, in West Africa, Senegal, right, who's also working on that, who's also dealing with that, right? And the first thing that comes out of his mouth to me, he and I are talking about this. He said, well, you know, Diop talked about this. I said, yes. You know, he said, Diop talks about this, right? But we haven't, we haven't picked up this aspect of Diop's scholarship and ran with it, right? And so um, he and I are going to be dealing with that whole Kerma Kush connection to West Africa via the earthen pyramids and tumuli and so forth, right? And so he's a, uh, um, um, a, a foremost um, authority on that, especially considering that he's speaking from his own cultural reference point, right? The 
the, the various ethnic groups in, in the Senegambia region, right? And, and connecting that with the Nile Valley. So this is, th- th- this is powerful and this is unique yeah. in that sense, right? Because it's not been too many conferences where we bring the Francophone and Anglophone speaking African diaspora together at one conference, mm-hmm. right? That's a mm-hmm. rare occurrence, right? And so this is what um, we're doing in West Africa and beyond. Dr. Issa, you want to talk about um, uh, uh, Victor, Dr. Uh, Victor Ngono? Hold on, yeah. I just wanna, uh, hold on, I just wanna say, um, I, I wanna go through these quickly I, um, in, in terms of the names, because I just wanna, introduce them and what they're going to talk about because i want to ask y'all some more questions that we're going to expand on kind of the stuff that you're just talking about uh right now so uh so yes the next person is uh dr uh ingono yeah dr ingono is going to be um presenting on um he will be presenting on um um Thailand, the the, the 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 role of Kemet and Kush in the development of the civilization in Thailand and and um, uh, what's the other country? Southeast uh, Asia, Southeast Asia, mm-hmm. Cambodia. Mm-hmm. We know those temples, right? Mm-hmm. Those temples, those Buddhist and pre-Buddhist ancient temples. Well, this brother is one of the leading experts on this in the world. He's taken the work of Renato Rashidi to the next level. He's furthered that research. Hmm. But, but, and he's gonna be showing us how, which, 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 which royal families in Kim and in Nubia that had a major impact on our brothers and sisters in Southeast Asia. Now, we don't have to guess this anymore. We have the scholars. So this is why we call it West Africa and beyond. Because now we're going beyond West Africa. Right? And so I'm, I'm so excited. This brother's at the University of Sheikh Abdul Jop. Uh, um, he studied in Cameroon. University oh, of Yaoundé. Yeah, I mean, yeah. look, y'all. This, and, and, you know, for the price that we're giving this at, we wanted to make it affordable for our people because quite often our people don't have access to this type of knowledge. And so we have to guess. Indeed. And, and, and you now know what? you're going to have full access to this knowledge. This is sacred knowledge. And as Dr. Dr. Um, Faraji said, in our book, The Origin of the Word Amen, we talk about this. We have it in our bibliography that, that, that there's a source that goes back to 1821, 200 years ago, a British source. And the British got into this late. They were one of the last of the European groups to get into Nile Valley civilization. And they they do a comparative study between West Africa, particularly that of the Akan and that of ancient Egypt and Abu Sindia. Yeah, it's called called the the Ashantis. The Egyptians and the Ethiopians are comparative study. <laughs> We're 200 years behind. Yeah, we are. Yeah. I know. I know. All seriously wants to keep us keep us pushing. So I'm just yeah. going to say that Doctor Ngono, his doctor is unique too, right? It's an interdisciplinary PhD, right, in Egyptology, and his emphasis in Southeast Asian studies. Yeah. I mean, how how interdisciplinary and transdisciplinary is that (laughs) to do Egyptology in historical studies between Africa and Southeast Asia. Right. So I just want to say that about him. Yes. And I know someone in a, in a, the chat is, you know, saying, saying Thailand, really? I'm like, you really need to travel to Egypt because they even have uh, in, of course, in the late period, um, when a lot of these uh, East Asians show up in Egypt and they even have carvings of them in, in certain temples. And I, and I have some uh, videotape and, fo- um, and photos of that. 
and so there there is interaction uh between egypt and far off asia not just uh you know syria palestine you know in that general area so this is this is why it's important to attend the conference read the works so this this isn't this isn't uh dr ngono is not someone um <laughs> uh and, and and i'm not saying this to down our brother but you know he this is not someone that you know sonetter just saw walking in the middle of harlem and you know saying decided to do an interview of uh you know randomly and ask him some questions you know saying about egypt uh you know as he said his his dissertation was on these connections and so and so continuing out of the university of yondi we have dr omen digi well i want to add this brother brother Asar. can i say this really quick go ahead you know in the comment i'm also looking at the comments somebody said that that the, the influence is probably through the Mani people of Thailand. Look, and this is exactly why we're having this conference. You said probably because you don't know. You don't have to guess. Come to the conference and sign up, sign up and find out. Mm -hmm. Listen to the brother. We're going to have a French translator, right, who will be translating from French into English. Listen to him. I think we're going to have subtitles too. So you don't have to guess now, right? We're telling you the brother has already agreed to come on and be a part of this very unique and rare conference. We don't know when we'll be able to get this body, this group of people together again. This hasn't happened since, from my understanding on this level, since the UNESCO UNESCO conference that check into his job and Theofella Banga had and where they defeated the Europeans in their lives regarding whether or not Kemet or now Valley Civilization was black or white. We haven't had this gathering a body of intellectuals um, um, since then. So this is rare. So you don't have to guess. You don't have to make comments um, in the comment section saying probably come and find out for yourself that's all i have to say thank you all righty uh again dr uh omen digi out of the university of yondi actually i can speak on him uh he is an, an egyptologist and a linguist out of cameroon and he's done some very detailed work on the correspondences culturally and linguistically between the Basa of Cameroon and ancient uh, Kemet. And so, you know, there's a longstanding uh, oral tradition that, you know, parts of the Basa culture derive from, from Egypt. And we had a guest uh, not too long ago, Dr. Belek, Mandinge, uh, also out of Cameroon, of, of the Basa, who wrote this book here, uh, Likota Li Mbag, The Worldview and Social Organization of the Basa People of Cameroon, right? And so, you know, I, I'm, I'm bringing him up because, you know, of course, most of y'all uh, speak English. So Dr. Ndigi you know, he does his linguistic works and everything, and, and it's primarily in French. But if you want to hear some of the oral tradition about, you know, the Vasa people deriving from uh, Egypt, Ethiopia and things, uh, he discusses this in his his work as well, um, Dr. Mandinge. And so, I'm, again, I've interviewed him. He's on the channel, so you can look up the uh, that as well. And so he's a very, very powerful uh, uh, linguists in the Diopian school and, you know, is helping us to bring Egyptology uh, as a discipline, you know, to, to Cameroon. So I know that they're uh, formulating that, uh, that, that school there. So where, you know, you can get your PhD in Egyptology uh, there. 
Um, and so I know, Dr. Faraji, you can speak on Sister Anissa Malvoicing. Am I saying that correct? Voicing. Your your mic is muted. Yeah. Sorry. I'll speak on Anissa and um I mean very, very, okay. uh, very quickly. No problem. Both, both of them are PhD candidates. They're both PhD candidates. Uh uh Anissa, uh, she uh is a is a member along with myself of the William Leo Hansberry Society. Um she also does museum uh, archaeology and her work. She's studying the connection between uh, ceramics and Meroitic Kush, as well as Mali and Nigeria and so forth. Let me say that. She's looking at the connection of the ceramic tradition, right, mm -hmm. and ceramic practice and formation between Meroitic Kush, right, and um, Mali and Nigeria, right? Um, so she's an up and coming uh, young scholar, very bright, very sharp um, at the University of Toronto. Um, and, and, and she already has um, experience in, in um, museum exhibitions and so forth, right? Um, her, her counterpart, Dr. Uh, I shouldn't say doctor, he's a PhD candidate, Lamine Baji. He's a PhD candidate at the University of Sheikh Antediak. He's studying under Dr. Ibrahim Jiao, right, which is one of the prominent Africanist archaeologists right, uh, 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 on the continent and in the world, um, he's going to be looking at <clears throat> the role of uh, uh, the griot, right, mm -hmm. um, the jali, the fundi in West Africa and their tombs, right? Historically, historically, the jali or the griot uh, in the Senegambia region were, were buried in, within the babao tree. Right, and so the tomb of the Jolly, the Fundi, was the was the Baobab tree. Right. Hold on, I'm, I'm, I keep muting your mic, Jahi, because your your background noise is it, and and it echoes when he's speaking. So, so and of course, um, so that's what his paper, uh, his presentation will be on. And of course, that rings Osarian. That's Osarian traditions, because we know that in in the in the, in the story of Osir. Right mm -hmm. um, after his dismemberment and scattering, he is reconstituted in his tomb in the form of a tree, right? And yeah. so, in the Senegal Gambia region, um, for a very long time, uh, the practice is not so much prevalent now, but for, for up until maybe recently, the seventies, eighties, um, all griots, because of their role in the society, right? They 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 contain and embody the history of the people, right? They were not only the storytellers, but they were also royal counselors, royal advisors, right, educators, and so forth, right. And so they were buried within the sacred baobab tree, right. And so his presentation will uh, deal with that. Dr. Faraji, this right here is the baobab tree fruit, right here. Yeah, right. right I, on. I, I went and picked this myself today <laughs> because. <laughs> I knew we. I knew Dr. Faraji, Faraji would bring this up. This is an actual bow by fruit. Here's the is inside. That in the of, is that in your backyard? Um. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes <sir. laughs> and, and and keep in mind for for those of you who are are listening that um, Dr. Uh, Isa is in Africa right now, and you're in Senegal. I mean, Senegal or Gambia? Yeah, I'm in the Gambia. I'm but uh -huh. I'm always I'm, I'm in between the Gambia and Senegal, uh -huh. and uh, and this is the bow by fruit. It has more vitamin C. This small piece, it has more vitamin C than 20 oranges. This small piece, mm -hmm. right here, you just suck it, and it's a sour sweetening. But this is the actual fruit of the bow bow tree, and this is how, and this is what it produces, mm -hmm. right? And, and a lot of people use this instead of sugar in their drinks. Anyway, that's enough on that. Let me try some. <laughs> You're all welcome. You're all welcome to some of my bio bar, my bio bar, uh, uh, uh fruit right here. Mm, yes, it's delicious. All righty. We have next uh, brother uh, Reginald A. Mabry and Dr. Sandro Capochichi. Yeah, Dr. Iso speak on um, Brother Reggie Marbury. 
Yeah, brother Reggie, you know, this is a good friend of mine, brilliant brother. We wanted him to come on and talk about the role that um, African-Americans in pushing the legacy of Sheikh and Tijia because he did a nice presentation on um, transactional world. Um, Minister Brown, Transatlantic, actually. Um, YouTube Transatlantic, Minister Brown station. And it was a good, the good 30, 40 minutes of the first 30 or 40 minutes was just a genealogy of our understanding and our and our connection intellectually to now Valley civilization. And him being around during that time who worked on the project with Sheikh Antijia, he was over the editing and some other things um, with Professor Leonard Jeffries and Professor um, Rai, Raihiki. I forget her name, but she wanted to, uh, I can't think of her name right now. You're talking about Dr. Um, Riketi Amin? Right, yes, Dr. Riketi Amin. Okay. I, I'm, I'm trying to bring her and give her to give her a 10 minute presentation on her relationship because from Dr. Reggie, uh, Brother Reggie, he's been telling me that really the, the, the genius, particularly of this parent wave of people who are studying meta and actually came from her. And so, yeah, um, yeah so Reggie- It's Reggie kind of a pretty, dual thing. With, with her because it's really kind of her and uh the late um uh how could i forget his name uh jacob carruthers and so jacob they both Carruthers. come under that school like jacob the, oh. the jacob the chicago you know uh uh group of of, of jacob carruthers and um Dr. Riketi Amin and Dr. Riketi Amin studied and she actually has one of Diop's um, books translated into English, but the publishers won't let her publish it, you know, um, for some uh, for some odd reason. Um, but yeah, that that would be a good discussion, uh, Dr. Riketi and uh, on check on to Diop. So she's one of the 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 rare individuals here in the States that um that had that relationship so she was actually in senegal with him um you know uh studying so i'm sorry go ahead and uh dr sandro capo chichi you, you know i met i met dr chichi uh in 218 at the nubian studies conference in paris right mm -hmm. at, at the uh at the louvre and 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 the sorbonne uh, brilliant, brilliant scholar. Uh, I think he was originally um, based um, in in France. Um, I'm I'm not sure where his ancestral origin is. Um, what country? I believe is. in Benin. Right, it may be Benin. Mm -hmm. um, he has a PhD in linguistics from the University of Paris, and he's currently working on another PhD at Harvard <laughs> in African art history. Yeah. Right. This is, you know, and so when when we say we have a we have a symbol, um, the best and the brightest, right? That is certainly the case, and that's not only established scholars like Dr. Kita, but emerging scholars like um, Anissa and Sandro uh, and and and, and, me and so forth. So he, Dr. Chichi is going to present on the connection of the Amun symbolism between um, the Yoruba in Nigeria and ancient Kush and ancient Egypt. Mm -hmm. Indeed. And lastly, we have uh, Dr. Andrew Jags, who we've also interviewed on um, this channel and who uh, I know as well and, and been interacting with for a number of years. But go hey, ahead. Dr. Jags and I, um, we met at the British Museum Nubian Studies Conference in London in 2010. So he and I have been friends now for 12 years. Mm -hmm. um, he just finished his PhD at the University College of London um, in uh, uh, Egyptology, um, anthropology, uh, and so forth. Uh, he's traveled all throughout West Africa as well. Um, his um, his uh, presentation uh, will focus on the infinities Right between the Akan, Yoruba, 
other peoples in West Africa and um, ancient Egypt. His dissertation was called Ma'at Iwa, the affinities mm -hmm. between the Yoruba and ancient Kemet, something to that degree, right? Mm -hmm. And so, um, so you all see scholars mm -hmm. based in the US African diaspora, the UK, um, Canada, France, Senegal, Cameroon, uh, Gambia, right? We're bringing all of these uh, uh, scholars uh, together. You have anything to add, Dr. Issa? No, again, you know, um, the only thing I have to add is just share this link, share this video, support Brother Saw, and um, come and be a part of this rare occasion. Someone asked, will the videos of the conference be available later on? Yes, they will. We, we haven't talked about that because we were just so busy organizing and trying to promote it. And um, But I promise you guys, this is going to be a rare, rare occasion, February the 15th and 16th. Um, this is going to be rare. So be a part of it. Be a part of it. And also, let me say, let me say the times, right? Dr. Issa already yeah. said the conference is Tuesday and Wednesday, February 15th, February 16th, right? Next month, Black History Month 2022, right? And so we will be in uh, at least three time zones, right? So Pacific time, the conference is seven to one. Eastern time, the conference is uh, 10 to four. And then West African time, the conference is three to nine, right? Yeah. Um, and so we're going to be, you know, uh, uh, putting the conference on and, and have scholars from these these two different um, time zones and so forth. So yes, you know, go to the website, um, register. It's just thirty five dollars. Um, you have to register for each day separately. So you register for the fifteenth, and then you register for the sixteenth, right? Thirty five dollars each. Uh, for both days, and then you'll have um, access to, um, again, this unique and cutting edge conference, listen to all these great, <coughs> great minds um, from both the Anglophone and Francophone speaking African diaspora, right? That's, that, that, that's powerful. And lastly, um, I didn't say that I'll be presenting on the connection, um, the transatlantic slave trade and, and, and those of us who were taken out of these, from these ethnic groups who had just recently, within some of them recently within a hundred years, some of them um, three to 400 years, just arrived to Western Central Africa, straight from the Sudan, from the Sahel. They're, so they're coming out of this Nile Valley um, incubator and, and being basically forced into what is now known as West Africa, um, uh, escaping um, oppression, crop droughts. Um, uh, some of them were escaping um, Arab slave slave raidings. And so they ended up in that area and really didn't have much of a chance to set up these city states, these strong city states. And they were some of the first groups to be taken away during the transatlantic um, slave trade. So. I'll be dealing with the, the, this culture in the Americas, particularly focusing on the the United States, uh, on Sudanic culture. You're looking at archaeology, um, this Sudanic culture in the Americas, it's, it's via rituals and archaeology. All right. Uh, and just in case y'all didn't uh, know that Dr. Issa and Dr. Faraji will also be presenting at the conference. So what is your uh, presentation going to be on, Dr. Faraji? My, my, my presentation is going to be just a, a, a snippet of research I've been working on um, looking at the mounds, the tumuli, the earthen pyramids in West Africa and those in the Middle Nile Valley, right? For those who have, for those who have my book, I actually talk about this a great deal. It's a, it's a sub theme of my book, The Roots of Nubian Christianity Uncovered, The Triangle of the Last Pharaoh. And the reason why is because one of the cultures I look at, late antique Nubia, right? The Nubadian culture, the Nubadian people, right? The Nubides, uh, this culture 
um, they were a mound building culture, right? They buried their monarchs, kings and queens in these earthen mound style pyramids, right? And then, and then I discovered that these mound style pyramids were not just unique to late antique Nubia or, or Kerma or even um, Kustul, A group Nubia, but they're also found throughout West Africa and Central Africa and so forth. And so I've been mm -hmm. studying that and I'm gonna be presenting um, aspects of that, that research and scholarship, right? You know, we don't often talk about the, uh, the pyramids of West Africa. Mm -hmm. um, although they've been excavated for over a hundred years now, right? Mm -hmm. And we don't ever talk about them. The French, right, as early as 1902, right, were excavating um, the Mound Pyramids of West Africa. Arab chroniclers also talk about them and describe them, right? Mm -hmm. um, when, they, when they first come into West Africa, they're amazed by them and so forth, right? We know the tomb of Askia Muhammad, right? Um, the great... Yeah. Uh, monarch and so forth, right? But but there are others. In fact, in the Senegal Gambia region, watch watch this. Every time I say it, it, it blows me away. Still, there are thousands. There are thousands in the Senegambia region. And so, why isn't that common intellectual currency and knowledge, especially for our children, our youth here in the U.S. as well as on the African continent? That should be common sense. There are thousands in the Senegal Gambia region, right? And so Dr. Nasir Sar will, will, will deal with those and then um, I'll look at it from a more general perspective. Mm -hmm. Dr. East and I saw, we saw one when he took me to Ghana, 2005 up in Northern Ghana on the palace of the Pagapio, who's the, the monarch, the king of the Kassina people. Mm -hmm. There was a royal mound on the palace. I asked Dr. Issa what it was. I already knew what it was. I just wanted to hear what he going to say. He said, oh, I'm not, you know, you're muted, Dr. Issa. You're muted. Uh, yeah. I'm muted. So, you know, we, we saw it, and I was like, oh, that's a mound. And because I had seen photographs of the mound in books on Kermakush, late antique Nubia, the Nubian culture, right? And so I was like, that, that is a mound. Right. And then, of course, I found out that that wasn't unusual. They're all they're all throughout West Africa. Right. And so there's another culture I'm going to talk about. Mound building culture, tumuli building culture um, in northern Ghana. I'm going to talk about that as well. Right. Um, and, and, and again, the, the scholar who first, who first excavated him. There's even been well, well, this is what's deep to me. Right. This is why we have to we have to go beyond. Right. Transnational right, across borders. There's already been exhibits at the Manchester Museum in England on the tumuli in northern Ghana. Uh -huh. It's not a big deal. It's a wrap. It's done. Let's do this. Boom. Right? But uh -huh. what amazes me is that in Ghana, the average child in Ghana has no knowledge of this history, this culture, this tradition. It's not a part of the curriculum. It's, 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 it's in archaeology departments all throughout Africa. <laughs> Egyptology departments, history departments all throughout Africa, right? But it, it's, it's not common even among us here in the U.S., right? And we have a pretty thorough um, 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 Africana and African intellectual culture, both professional and grassroots, right? But, but that's not common, right? And it should be, and it's not common on the continent. So this is what we're... We're, we're, we're moving to, to, to make this knowledge um, common and not only specialize in the departments of archeology, span Egyptology, Nubiology, anthropology, right? Whether it's Harvard here or uh, 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 University of Pennsylvania or whether it's the Shekin Diop University, right? And so that knowledge should be disseminated. It should be in the curriculum, right? When I get students, you know, I've been teaching on the collegiate level now since 1998, right? So what is that? 24 years, right? And so I've had tons of Afri Africa, African continental students in my class and certainly, right, Black folk, indigenous here to the U.S., right? And um, that knowledge is not common, right? And so the students I've had from Senegal, the students I've had from Gambia, the students I've had from Ghana, even Kenya and Nigeria, right? 
do not get exposed to this information through primary school, secondary school, or tertiary institutions, what we call colleges and universities right here uh, in the U.S. And so this conference is going to make um, a den in that. That's what we're that's what we're seeking to do, right? So to bring this to everybody, so to speak, right, and not just you know those of us right who who have spent our lives doing this, uh, who have traveled, who've been engaged. Uh, dug deep into the libraries, dug deep into the archives, been mentored, right, and, and guided by many of these scholars yeah. and so forth. So let's make it available uh, to ev to everybody, right? Um, and alter the perception, you know, alter the perception of ourselves for ourselves, <laughs> right? That's very, very important. And then certainly our brothers and sisters on the continent um, as well, right? We have to know who we are, why we are, where we come from, right? And value that and then use that as the basis, right? To develop ourselves and mobilize ourselves, right? And create, right, the world that we want to see um, as African people. So I know I know, everybody listening uh, this morning or this afternoon or this evening, depending on where you are, right? We're all, we're all on the same page with that. Right. And so this conference is just one more contribution to that. Indeed. Uh, I'm sorry, I, I, I keep black. I just just want to know, um, tell you that I keep muting your mic because whatever you're doing over there, it's it's uh, your your I don't know if you're on the phone or if you're on a computer, but the mic is picking it up and it's very loud. So you're, you're either clacking or touching your phone or whatever. So that's that's why I keep muting while he's talking, because uh, once you unmute it, it's just it's just really loud. But go ahead. I'm sorry. I think it may be my fan. I'll cut off the fan. I'm just realizing that's probably where the noise is coming from. But I want to just thank our sponsors. Um, mm -hmm. We want to thank um, um, the Department <laughs> of Pan African Studies at Cal State LA, Dr. Lawson Bush, mm -hmm. for seeing the vision in this conference and and being a, 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 a strategic partner. We want to also thank the PLO Lumumba Foundation Gambia for helping us getting some resources with you, linking us with young people in Africa who actually put together the website and the flyers. So this mm -hmm. has been a pan-African endeavor, right? And um, you have others who want to come on and be sponsors want to help us and be a part of this legacy just um, send us an email reach out to us we uh, we're, we're in need of um, financial help but more importantly sign up for the conference ask others to sign up for the conference and I, I, I promise you you will not be disappointed mm -hmm. indeed indeed now um, well I'll just state what I'll be presenting on it and I'm gonna ask uh, I'm going to go back to something that uh, you mentioned earlier, uh, Dr. Issa. So the what I'm going to be discussing is the etymology of the word nature, but in the context of a, a, a larger argument in terms of how can we tell in which direction the flow of culture went in terms of uh ancient kemet because we you know matter of fact as, as i mentioned earlier i was ha having a conversation with dr uh Kida on last night and so we're talking about these um these researchers who who you know keep arguing that the culture comes from asia you know and the people settling into to egypt and gives birth to the Egyptian civilization. Well, when when you say that a culture comes through, they have to come with certain concepts that are not only present within that one group, because you know, uh, no man is an island unto himself. He comes from a community, and so do populations and languages. They belong in a greater community. And so, I'm gonna mute your mic again because the noise. Um, <laughs> So when we start looking at these divine concepts like nature, 
they all cluster you know it's a principle in biology in terms of of least moves you know mm -hmm. saying the most diversity with the least moves in terms of tracing the origin of concept i mean origins of certain morphologies in biology and we have the same thing in linguistics so when we we analyze these these spiritual and cultural concepts by the diversity principle in least moves it is central uh africa that that has that diversity of of, uh, of these particular concepts and variations and even has the older forms of the word and so but it does not exist beyond egypt as native concepts and so you you'll see this diversity and even within the uh the ancient Nile valley civilization itself how there's many different variations of the word nature that you would never know had you not done an in-depth linguistic analysis which tells us that there's more than one or two different african groups who met up in the Nile valley um, who who their concepts have merged through a process of convergence. And, and so when you're seeing names like Amin, you know, it is cognate with another title that is applied to Osir. And it's no coincidence that you will find these same titles uh, going into Nigeria about a deity that is the ruler of the underworld, uh, the quote unquote duat etc cetera, etc cetera. and so all of this you know will you know expand and emerge from the conversation uh on nature but since we talked about a moon of course y'all have written uh the book on amen and you mentioned a a uh a, a, a review piece that was done by a certain scholar about your updated work and you know he has some not so nice words and y'all have or y'all preparing a response to it that you mentioned earlier i just wanted to know what the the initial aspect of the conversation was and, and what is this in connection to the the book on almond that you mentioned earlier Right. Well, we, we we have finished the response. Um, we we are going to release this response right before the conference. I'll let Dr. Faraji talk about that. <clears throat> but what Brother Asar is referring to is um, I went to Dr. Cambon um, at his house in, at in his office and at his house and gave him a copy of our newly released book on the origin of the word amen it's the second edition and it's an updated edition and he did a review on the book we didn't know that he was going to do a review on the book um uh, and the review was 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 pretty it, it wasn't not friendly at all and so yes we did respond to the review um I'll allow, I will allow Dr. Um, Faraji to talk about that, but more importantly, me, me, myself and Dr. Faraji, we've been discussing this, and he, in, in a way, you know, he, although he felt he was doing, he was right, but, you know, we proved him to be wrong, but this type of dialogue is needed, right? This type of dialogue is needed, uh, and it allowed us to really go deep into our intellectual library, spiritually and physically, and, and, and give an appropriate response. And so, response. And so, we're going to release this response to the world, and hopefully, this will open up more discussions and more debates about our, our ancient history and this connection to the present. Go ahead, brother Faraji. I'm going. Well, to yeah, yeah, I mean, of course, you know, Cambon word a word critique of uh, the word I'm in our second edition. Um, and, and, and as I said to Dr. Issa, uh, it, it, it's actually a welcomed opportunity, right? Because it compelled us um, to respond and to respond with rigor, right? And to respond with precision um, and to go in more depth, right? And so he, he offered us an invitation um, to do that, which is what, which is what intellectual discourse 
um, and debate and the exchange of ideas are. And I'm not going to talk much about it, but I, I will say say two things because we are going to release the response, you know, by the time um, um, the, the, the conference uh, begins. But I, I, I'll just say this. Number one, if, if, if you read his review, fundamentally, he does not disagree with us. Fundamentally, he's in complete agreement with the connection between the Amun or Amin uh, in Ghana and that of the Nile Valley, right? He does not negate that argument, right? He critiques our methodology, right? And 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 he, he you know he, he he's he's uh, um, um, you know he's very um, critical. Let me just say that he's very critical of our methodology and how we arrive at our conclusions. That's really the debate. He doesn't disagree with, with with the argument itself because that that can't be uh, disputed even even according to him, right? But he takes us to task for our methodology, and so we we respond. But I I, I will say this: he's a he, he's a linguist. Um, I know him. Um, I've met him. Uh, the, the the year or so I was living in Ghana in two fifteen two sixteen. Um, I went to his class. Um, my wife, who is a Ghanaian woman, uh, a native tree speaker. Um, we went, we sat in on his class. Um, and so he, 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 he knows us as well, but it, he's a linguist, right? And, and so one of the things we said is, is that you didn't pay attention to our archeological and anthropological arguments. You completely ignored those dimensions. And so in our response, we highlight that aspect of our book and then um, we also address some of the linguistic questions that he raised as well. And so, uh, again, I, I, for me, it, it, it was an invitation. It was an opportunity um, to respond with rigor and precision, um, right, to, to, to meet the task. And so uh, when we release it, you all will see um, and then you all can determine um, you know, our, our response to his, to his questions and issues and so forth. Indeed. I've had an opportunity to read it and, uh, some, some arguments I would agree with, but then his, his counters were not strong in, in my opinion, they, they, like they his counters wouldn't have supported the argument regardless like when he would he would recommend certain books like if you would have read this he addresses this but when you go to the source material there's there's not much addressing at all you couldn't use that as a rebuttal you know in a in an argument um and so i, I wait to see the the conversation that um arises out of this but it's 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 important in the context of there's dialogue and uh and and debate even on the continent you know regarding the these things so we're we're not just individuals who just believe that there's some connections there's there's debate and and to the degree of of what you know this and this means in the greater context of africana uh, studies and african history in general and so but you know the 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 book itself really adds and puts some some meat on the the essential bones that diop mentioned that you mentioned uh dr faraji at the beginning of the conversation and that is amen is the the god of all of black africa <laughs> and um and I can show that a, a, a hundred ways, you know, uh, in, in various different dialect forms. But this is exactly what I'm talking about. When we when we use the principle of the most diversity, but the least moves, you know, when you're when you're talking from a large scale, you 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 only find this natively in Africa. And so uh amongst these these other african folks but when you go into the middle east when you go into europe you don't find these conceptualizations you don't find these references to the divine with these words 
in in culture so when we're talking about the culture so like even if you we know that there was some influx of in uh excuse me of uh of asiatics into the delta in pre-dynastic times and things of this nature but again as the archaeology or uh, as everything would bear out if they came and brought the culture with them they would have had the words with them they would have had the 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 cultural nuances you know you 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 brought up the ba uh earlier dr isa you know in terms of spirit you know what, what a lot of people don't know is that you know there's 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 this phenomenon that i always like to talk about called paranimi and and paranimi is the the belief that there's a connection between words that sound alike right and and these words can be from a common root or they can just over time evolve to at this synchronic point sound alike but at the time that the culture gets a hold of the words you know they they will synthesize these concepts and um and it becomes part of the culture. So when you talk about the Ba uh, in its equivalence in Central Africa, you know, you you have these leopard societies because you know the word for Ba is also the word for uh, uh, leopard. And, and it's also a word for spirit. And so you had these same leopard societies with cognates for the word for spirit and the word for leopard. And you get a deeper understanding of, of how these things correlate and for example, like uh, Mubai Binge Bilolo, another Congolese Francophone scholar, mm -hmm. you know, who's also a prince in a royal line in the Democratic Republic of Congo. And he talks about how the, the leopard in his tradition, in the Baluba tradition, is seen as the double, his spiritual double in the spiritual world, right? And so when when you just understand that aspect of a living tradition in central africa where they wear the leopard skins and things of this nature and then you go back into egypt and then you start reading texts about the ba and then your ba flying off at death and then you know coming back and doing all like it starts to make sense in terms of the conceptualization and that's what conferences like like this bring out especially from native african uh speakers i mean native african uh persons who grew up in their uh their native traditions and speak the native languages like things become a lot more clearer because to a certain extent even with the advent of islam of christianity that they hold on to many of the traditions uh and there are some people who are knowledgeable about the history and the whys of the tradition and then some aspects are just part of the everyday experience that they may not even reflect and think about you know what this means and where this comes from um but it's just part of their everyday experience but um, you know, go ahead you know um two dimensions you know even in our even in our our response our rebuttal is is one um the priority of Meriwedic Kush mm. right um another reason why we have to pay attention to, to Meriwedic <laughs> Kush all the Kush in particular but Meriwedic Kush is because of the longevity of the civilization it's pre-dynastic right and it persists on a material level well into the 14th century AD 15th century AD I want us to think about that right and so what my point is, is that we don't we don't always have to in making these correlations, and comparisons, right, jump from, let's say, the Akan, the Igbo, the Yoruba, the, the Fula, the Sarer, the Wolof people, you know, all the way to Bronze Age Egypt. No, that culture continued to be a living tradition well into the medieval period, 14th, 15th century A.D., right, between the 6th and 12th century A.D., right? not only in the Nile Valley, but across the, the, the Sahel, the Savannah and, and the Saharan regions, right? So that's number one. And then number two, uh, I'll say the, the uh, Paranami, right? As a way to do linguistics and philosophy, 
in African culture is prevalent, right? And and, and I think you're in terms of you know Africana African Center scholarship, you're you you may be one of the first of the first to really bring that to the fore, right? The principle of paronymy, right? And and so you know I I've been looking at that. Uh, and and the Meroitic language, which we don't pay attention to either, which is something we we also deal with in, in our response, right? We don't really we don't pay a lot of attention to the, to the Meroitic uh, language, right? And its influence, as well as uh, uh, Meduneta, right? And then that principle in African languages, it, it, it's all throughout African languages, right? And this is what I you know one night I'm I'm reading a book. Um, by a scholar, and I, and I cite her, um, and she's actually looking at late Osarian texts, funerary texts, but late, you know, maybe 1000 BCE to the medieval period, something like that, or maybe the Roman period, right? So she's not, it's, it's not earlier than that, right? And I'm reading it, and she busts out and starts talking about paronymy in these Osarian texts. Right. And how they used it, the wordplay. Right. And punning and so forth. It's common. Right. And so I'm up one night. I'm reading this and I was like, now, ain't this what Brother Osair been saying? <laughs> right. You know, and so. I, I, I've learned that that is a very important. Again, that's not my forte, comparative historical linguistics, but I've learned that that is a very important component to understanding the philosophy that underlies African linguistics. And it's brilliant how the African mind works like that. I'll I, I just leave it at that. You, you're mute. Or oh, Sarah, you're mute. I was saying that... Um... We're going to uh, wrap up here. Uh, I see that we're going on, on two hours now. So I just want to first and foremost thank each and every one of you uh, for for joining this conversation. Those of you who are listening uh, live and then, of course, of you who are listening on the archive. And of course, we'd like to thank our very special guests, Dr. Salim Faraji and Dr. Jahi Issa. And we are here talking about the uh, West Africa and beyond ancient Nubian and, and, and Egyptian interconnections with the Niger Valley and Atlantic World Conference that will be happening online uh, February the 15th and the 16th. And to learn more and to register uh, for the conference, visit westafricabeyond.org. And so um, I just want to allow uh, my guests to uh, have closing words. And if, you know, you would like to share your um, for people who want to get in contact with you and just learn more about, you know, whatever your scholarship, what you got going on next, um, et cetera, beyond this conversation, you know, uh, where can they find you at? So I'll, I'll start off with uh, uh, Dr. Issa. And then um, we'll end with Dr. Uh, Faraji. Unmute yourself, Dr. Issa. Okay, very good. Um, you can find me at, um, I'm still teaching part-time at, uh, at Mega Everest College in um, New York. Um, so I do have a, a university um, email um, there, or you can just use my um, general email, which is J A H I I S S A six five at gmail dot com. Um, uh, I am living in the Gambia right now with my two teenage American-born children, <laughs> and they walked off into the early moonlight about an hour and a half ago, and I haven't heard from them. So uh, I have to run and make sure a lion or a leopard or a, 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 a hippo hasn't gotten them, right? No, so, 
<laughs> I'm being serious. I don't know where they are. <laughs> they're, generally not, they're generally not gone this long. It's been almost two hours. So I'm assuming they're having fun in West Africa. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, look, you guys come and um, sign up, support us. Uh, offer scholarships to other people, both young and old. If you could afford it, sign up, to pay for 10 people to come who may you who you think may be, find this interesting and helpful. Um, and, um, you know, we, we, we look forward to uh, another great conference after this next year. We got something that we're planning. And um, I'm just excited to be here with brothers like Asar and uh, Dr. Farage and putting together this great Pan-Africa endeavor um, to, to, to further the work of our great ancestors who have who can contribute so much. We didn't have to go through what they went through. We looked at what Dr. Clark and Dr. Ben and Joe Laney, all of these guys, they went through a lot. We don't have to go through that, right? Um, we didn't talk, I don't know if we mentioned that um, Charles Finch will be one of the keynote speakers. We got Okwani Ose who will, be, who will give um, a few minutes of his time. Um, I just reached out to Professor Small. Um, I talked to him actually last night about this conference, and he was very excited. So he may come on and just just give a, a brief commentary. And so um, we're just excited about it, and we pray that that uh, everybody who watches this will be able to get on, register, and be a part of this historic event. Yeah, I, I just want to echo, um, register for the conference. Uh, register for the conference, right? Um, WestAfricaBeyond.org. Um, Black History Month should not pass and you have not registered and attended this conference, right? Treat yourself and your social network, your community, right, to uh, participating and attending this conference, right? You all, you all see who have been with us most of the time that we are bringing um, we are assembling uh, a group of scholars from the Francophone African diaspora, Anglophone African diaspora, all together in one setting to deal with what's important, which is our history, our culture, our traditions, uh, right, our customs, our practices, our languages, and so forth, right, and to get this, this information, to get this knowledge out. So register for the conference. Um, register today and then go spread the word um, and, and so forth. Um, we can be reached at Amen University LLC at gmail.com. Amen University LLC, all one word, at gmail.com. Amen University LLC at gmail.com. Of course, I'm on Facebook. Um, my faculty webpage, California State University, uh, Dominguez Hills, um, right? You can look me up there. I also want to give a shout out to <clears throat> another organization, the William Leo Hansberry Society, which is an organization that I, I helped um, on about a year ago with a group of scholars from the African diaspora in Africa who, who are all Egyptologists, all Nubiologists, archaeologists, anthropologists, and so forth. Look up the William Leo Hansberry Society. Um, um, you'll see the work that we're doing. But again, register for West Africa and beyond ancient Nubian and Egyptian interconnections with uh, 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 the Niger Valley and the Atlantic world, right? Um, we are uh, uh, the descendants, right? And the living human beings of mm. these cultures that we are studying, right? And we have survived uh, here, right, uh, in the US. And we have negotiated a harsh and brutal reality, right? In, in fact, it, it is really amazing and miraculous that we even talking about Africa, <laughs> right? We often take that for granted sometimes because we were not conditioned and educated to love Africa, mm -hmm. right? And, and to discuss and research Africa, right? That was not the intention of the educational socialization, right? Uh, in the United States and many other places um, um, in, in the West, right? But the fact that we are is because our ancestors resonate within us, right? And so 
Um, Osar, again, thank you so much for this opportunity, this invitation. Uh, we appreciate you. We appreciate the work um, that you've been doing over the years. I think we've been knowing each other now close to 15 years, if I'm not mistaken, um, mm -hmm. if, if not more. And so, you know, we just want to say we value you. We thank you for this opportunity. Um, and uh, all those listening, you all have a have a, a peaceful day, productive day, uh, prosperous day. And I leave you with Ankh Uja Sanet. Thank you. Thank you. And, you know, the honor is all mine. And I appreciate y'all giving me the opportunity to uh, present some of my scholarship uh, in the same uh, vicinity uh, of, of these great uh, scholars and, and future scholars uh, who, who have made and will be making uh, their mark uh, on, on Africana studies. And um, so, you know, again, I want to thank everyone for, for listening. Um, I got to get ready for another interview in a second. I just want to say to, um, before I forget, I want to um, say to H. Stamter, uh, who sent a donation via Cash App that I did receive it. And I just want to say thank you. Thank you very much uh, for your donation. And um those email addresses and websites um i'm going to put in the description um so you know people who are catching the archives and, and they want to get in contact with our guest they will be there as well and so uh with that i'm just going to end with you know one of our tried and true uh commercials and you know, we got big tings are gone, uh, as we like to say, uh, coming this this 2022. So make sure that y'all stay tuned. And if you have not liked and subscribed to this channel, please like the video. Please share the video. And uh, if you are new to this uh, channel and program, please uh, subscribe so that you can get all of the notifications so when i bring you know these these powerful scholars like uh dr isa and dr faraji that you will be the first to know uh what's about to go down so i do appreciate each and every one of you and until next time peace you see i have a lot of things a lot of things that's on my mind And I would like to let them out Look, I see reality breaking down all my fantasies It would be nice if I at least had one fantasy The neutrality about to take a terabyte From the American apple pie better get a slice It's kinda scary the way that this life is moving on Marvin's doing backflips inside his grave, what's going on? We have head on collisions, not seeing another's vision Maybe that's the reason why some colors fit the description A lot of relationships need life rafts, sinking ships I guess you just can't have only one like potato chips I would love for you to listen with an open heart But would you really even hear me if it's torn apart? I don't do the things that I used to I'll be fine even if I lose you Okay, 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 okay Peace and blessings, family. My name is Asar Motep and I am with the Martin Delaney Center for Egyptology as well as the popular YouTube channel Mbongi. I am an Africologist and computer scientist out of Houston, Texas and Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And I have spent the last 20 years researching the connection between ancient Kemet, that is modern Egypt, and modern Bantu speaking cultures of Central and Southern Africa. Throughout this 20 year journey, I've examined all the relevant literature in numerous languages, collected paleontological as well as archaeological data from across millennia. I have presented hypotheses and abandoned hypotheses, come to conclusions and abandoned conclusions, reviewed arguments for and against known hypotheses, and analyzed frameworks that sought to define and characterize the vast array of African experiences. After over 20 years of asking critical questions of history, of philosophy, religion, and culture, 
I have finally gotten to the point where I have complete and total faith in the results of our research. I say our research because I am one of among a number of scholars who have either laid the foundations in classical Africology or are continuing to expand and develop more robust research on this connection between ancient Egyptian and Bantu civilizations. After spending so much time behind the computer and in the libraries and in the museums for over 20 years, I believe it is time to go out and to touch the living artifacts and engage with the people involved in the research whose stories we have been telling all this time, which brings us to why we are here today. Although I have written and will continue to write about the results of my research, my goal now is to summarize this data and present it in documentary film form. I have decided to put some of that computer science as well as new media experience together to creatively tell this important aspect of African history that many may not be aware of. The title of the film is China Intu, Ancient Kemet and the Intu Universe. And we are currently raising funds for the first phase of our journey. In February of 2022, I will be joining the crew of the award-winning documentary film, Hoppy, the role of economics on the development of civilization for a very important returning to the source tour and conference in Egypt, which we know is in Northeast Africa. And while I am there, I will be shooting parts of our film, Chiena Into, and gathering footage for a proof of concept trailer, which will be used for greater fundraising efforts in the near future. And this is where you come in. I am currently trying to raise $5,000 to help with location expenses, equipment rentals, insurance, and the like, so that we can get some great shots for some primary as well as B-roll footage. When we return from Egypt, some of this footage will be combined with some preliminary interviews to compile a unique trailer to give the audience and potential investors a glimpse of the vision and potential of the film. Our ultimate goal is to travel to places like the Democratic Republic of Congo, Zimbabwe, Uganda, and South Africa for the first film. And did I forget to mention that we intend for this to be a series of documentary films. Therefore, subsequent films will require us to travel to places like Cameroon, Nigeria, Ghana, and Senegal, as well as Ethiopia, Kenya, and Somalia. We have big goals, and with your help, we can make this happen. And if you're interested in donating to this film project, please visit our website at www.chinaintofilm.com where you can leave a donation. There are other ways you can donate as well, which includes joining our Patreon page, uh, donating through Cash App, or donating live when we're doing a live show on YouTube. And the YouTube channel has over 6,000 subscribers and Facebook has over 5,000 uh, subscribers as well. And with a minimum donation of like $5 each, we can uh, quickly reach our goal. You can spread the word of our efforts by sharing this video with friends and colleagues, as well as liking it. We appreciate your help and all donors will be given credit on the website as well as at the end of the film during the credits. We thank you from the bottom of our heart to those who have given generously already and we look forward to bringing this important film to the public. Hotel. Okay.